Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. The Disney theme parks bring our favorite characters from beloved Disney and Pixar films right to life. Some of Hollywood's biggest stars are responsible for lending their voices to iconic animated characters. Now we've grown up with many of these recognizable voices, but when it comes to the rides and attractions at the Disney parks, there are several instances where these actors are replaced for various reasons. Now within the Walt Disney Company, there's a division called Disney Character Voices, and includes hiring voice doubles for numerous celebrities. So let's explore the voices of some of our favorite Disney rides as we count down seven times Disney replaced voice actors at the Disney theme parks. Number 7 Timon from the 1994 feature film The Lion King has become an iconic Disney character. Repeat after me. <coughs> Hakuna Matata. The wisecracking meerkat is voiced by the hilarious Nathan Lane, who starred in TV, film, and on Broadway. Now, Timon sounds very animated, and when you hear Nathan Lane speak, you realize he doesn't alter his voice all that much for the character. <laughs> when riding the Matterhorn takes on a whole new meaning. That's just the personality of Nathan Lane. Hey, we don't want to hear about it. Well, when you watch Festival of the Lion King at Disney's Animal Kingdom, you aren't hearing Nathan Lane as Timon, and instead, it's the voice of actor Kevin Schoen. I gotta say, he captures the right tone and energy. You could easily fool someone into thinking that it's Nathan Lane. For a quick comparison, here's Nathan Lane followed by Kevin Schoen. Look, kid. Bad things happen, and you can't do anything about it, right? Not you, oh, but these monkeys, they're ruining my big number! Since 1995, Kevin Schoen has been hired by Disney to be Nathan Lane's voice double. So when he isn't available, like on contract for a Broadway show, or if the project just doesn't have a big budget, Disney brings in Kevin Schoen. At this point, Kevin's actually voiced Timon more than Nathan Lane. This includes 63 episodes of the Timon and Pumbaa TV series, numerous video games, and the new Lion Guard series, plus so much more. Thank you! <laughs> Number 6 Tom Hanks is an award-winning actor who's provided the voice of Woody in the Toy Story films since 1995. What? No, no, listen, no one's getting replaced. Buddy needs him. You like that upper register I that did. I still have since 1995? <laughs> Woody has been seen all over the Disney theme parks, but whenever we hear Woody, whether it be a parade, a ride, or even in Toy Story Land, it's never Tom Hanks. That's my brother Jim. <laughs> There are so many uh, computer oh, Sir, okay, computer games and video things, and Jim just, he works on those all year long. And they said, you don't want to do this. He said, no, get my brother Jim, you know, he'll do it. So that's my brother Jim. Siblings tend to sound alike, so Jim Hanks is a perfect person to voice double Tom Hanks. And he does a pretty great job, too. Hey, 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 there it is. There's Tom right there. Hi, I'm Tom Hanks. Here's a little comparison of both Hanks brothers. Hey, howdy, hey, that's me. I'm on a yo-yo. Oh! It's a bank. Cool. Hey, partners. Buzz says riding with Slinky Dog on the coaster set reminds him of flying. Jim's voice is so similar that sometimes it's hard to tell it's not Tom Hanks. Oh, way to play, everyone. Number 5. A Bug's Life was Pixar's second film, but did you know that It's Tough to Be a Bug at Disney's Animal Kingdom opened seven months before the film premiered in theaters? Former CEO Michael Eisner had the idea of creating a show under the Tree of Life that would feature bugs. So, using the attraction to promote the upcoming Pixar film was a perfect fit. This means that if you experienced the attraction before November of 1998, Flick and Hopper were only known as theme park characters. Now, since it's tough to be a bug and a bug's life were in production at the same time, you'd think all the voices in the attraction would be the same, but they actually aren't. In the film, Kevin Spacey voices the villain Hopper, but in the attraction, he's voiced by a Bugs Life writer and co-director, Andrew Stanton. For a comparison, here's Kevin Spacey in the film, followed by Andrew Stanton in the attraction. A piece of dirt. No, I'm wrong. You're lower than dirt. You're an ant. 
Fleck. What are these humans wearing on their heads? Oh, I, I made an honorary box. Honorary so they- what? They're our biggest enemy. They actually do sound pretty similar, and many people think the attraction features Kevin Spacey's voice. Apparently, Kevin Spacey declined to voice the attraction since his contract stipulated he wouldn't voice Hopper for toys and theme park attractions. Now, although Andrew Stanton is usually behind the camera, he's actually no stranger to lending his voice to animated characters. He's actually the voice of Crush and the Seagulls in Finding Nemo, as well as the evil Emperor Zurg in the Toy Story films. So when it comes to the theme parks, you can actually hear him as Crush and the Seagulls in the Finding Nemo submarine voyage at Disneyland and the Seas with Nemo and Friends at Epcot. Then over in Tomorrowland, you can hear him on the Buzz Lightyear rides as the evil Emperor Zurg. Number 4 Buzz Lightyear is another favorite Toy Story character who's been voiced by Tim Allen since 1995. No, 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 go, go, just go, I'll I'll catch up! Tim's gritty, authoritative tone has become another iconic Disney sound. I'm not a toy! You are a toy! But on the Buzz Lightyear rides in Tomorrowland at Magic Kingdom and Disneyland, you aren't listening to Tim Allen. Space Rangers, check the status board to review your score. Remember, The voice you hear is Patrick Fraley. He's a very talented voice actor with over 200 credits to his name. But when it comes to his Buzz Lightyear, something just isn't right. It's missing the gritty bass in Buzz's voice, and it doesn't sound like Tim Allen. For a comparison, here is Buzz Lightyear in the first Toy Story film, followed by Patrick in the ride. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? All right, you junior space rangers, listen up. Green Squadron will retrieve the power cells, while the rest of you concentrate on those robots. Like some of the other actors mentioned on the list, Disney hired Patrick Fraley to be the official voice double for Tim Allen. At the time in the mid-90s, Tim was extremely busy with other TV and movie projects, so Patrick worked a lot filling in for Buzz Lightyear. Many of these projects were video games, toys, and the theme park rides. Now, although Tim Allen missed out on the Tomorrowland Buzz Lightyear rides, you can, however, hear him as Buzz Lightyear on Toy Story Midway Mania. Number 3 In the 2003 film Finding Nemo, audiences immediately fell in love with Dory. Hi, I'm Dory. Played by comedian Ellen DeGeneres. Great idea! You take me to find him! Finding Nemo is represented all over the Disney theme parks, but whenever we hear Dory, it's never voiced by Ellen DeGeneres. He's orange with white stripes and looks kind of like you, only smaller. Yes, have you seen him? Seen who? Here in the seas with Nemo and friends at Epcot, Dory is voiced by actress Jennifer Hale, who is the official voice double for Dory. Jennifer is a very talented voiceover artist with over 400 credits to her name. She's been Dory's stunt double since 2003 for all the Finding Nemo video games and theme park attractions. Now, Dory is practically just Ellen's normal speaking voice, but her voice is so specific and unique, it's hard to sound exactly like her. This is Ellen in Finding Nemo, followed by Jennifer at Epcot. A boat? Hey! I've seen a boat that passed by not too long ago. It, it went, um, this way! It went this way! Follow me! Hi, I'm Dory. Hi, I'm Dory. I am looking for my shot! I can help you! You can hear Jennifer's voice sits a bit lower than Ellen's, and it's missing some of her spunk and twang. Games? I love games! Ooh, I'm thinking of something. I mean, you can still tell it's Dory, but it definitely doesn't sound too much like Ellen DeGeneres. Now, Jennifer is actually no stranger to Disney voices. In addition to being Ellen's voice double, she's also been the official voice of Cinderella since 1999. Number 2 the 1988 cult classic film Who Framed Roger Rabbit featured stand-up comedian Charles Flesher lending his voice to the title character of Roger Rabbit. There is no, there is no came out in town. During the 90s, Roger Rabbit was appearing a lot in the Disney theme parks, and today he still has a big presence in Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland. They gotta help me! 
So that voice you just heard, plus all of Roger Rabbit's dialogue on Roger Rabbit's cartoon Spin, is done by acclaimed voice actor Jess Harnell. Back in the early 90s, one of Jess's very first voiceover jobs was as a voice double for Roger Rabbit. It was his introduction to voiceover work. Charles Flusher was busy at the time, so Jess Arnell auditioned for Disney and got to lend his voice to a lot of 90s Roger Rabbit appearances, like this one here. As a comparison, this is what Roger Rabbit sounded like in the film, followed by Roger Rabbit in the theme parks. Okie dokie, why I'll take care of him like he was my own brother, or my own sister. Ow! We gotta give somebody a special surprise right now! They both sound very similar, although Jess's Roger sits a bit higher in the vocal register. For me, Jess is the voice of Roger Rabbit since my introduction to the character was in the theme parks. I didn't watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit until later on. Is this the case for anyone else? Now, Jess Harnell has over 350 credits to his name, and he actually lends his voice to a few other well-known Disney characters in the theme parks. In addition to being the voice double for Roger Rabbit, he's also the voice double for Albert Brooks, who voices Marlin in Finding Nemo. I have to find the boat! You can hear him as Marlin, the paranoid and neurotic clownfish, on the two Finding Nemo rides at the parks. Oh, of course! When fish can fly! <laughs> and that's not all. Jess is also the voice of Br'er Rabbit, and can be heard on Splash Mountain at both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. One of these days, I gotta think. Number 1 The Cars films are jam-packed with many famous actors lending their voices to these ever-so-popular Pixar characters. So when it comes to the Cars attractions at Disneyland and Walt Disney World, the original actors have always come back to voice their characters. Well, in 2008, legendary actor Paul Newman, who voices Doc Hudson, passed away. I knew you needed a crew chief, but I didn't know it was this bad. Now, Doc Hudson appears on Radiator Springs Racers in Cars Land. So, Disney turned to voice actor Corey Burton to impersonate Paul Newman and fill the shoes of Doc Hudson. It takes more than new tires to win a race. I have your new crew chief. Corey Burton is one of the most versatile voice actors in the industry, with almost 450 credits to his name. In addition to Dog Hudson, he can be heard all around the Disney theme parks. Since the 1980s, he's been the official voice of Captain Hook, taking over for Hans Conry. So you can hear him as Hook and actually Mr. Smee on Peter Pan's flight. <laughs> Since 1988, he's also been Disney's official voice for Dale. He's even the official voice of Grumpy and can be heard on the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. He voices Tweedledee and Tweedledum on the Alice in Wonderland ride at Disneyland. You went this way. No, no, that way. <laughs> Float Sam and Jet Sam on the Little Mermaid ride. The safety announcer on Pirates of the Caribbean. And no flash pictures. Prepare to make sales. Plus the pooped pirate a little later on in the ride. Oh, it's the treasure map for sure and no mistake. And the ghost host during Haunted Mansion Holiday at Disneyland. The mansion was changed. All was soon covered, adorned, and deranged. It's pretty remarkable how many characters he voices just at the Disney theme parks. You'd never know they were all him. So have you ever noticed any of these character voices being different in the theme parks? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.